Hello again. So, I've been making updates. Uh, I now have a fully automated workshop, um, which required a couple of pieces to put together. But looking down on it, this is my whole kind of industrial section. So, uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you will have already seen the um, ore sorting and the automated furnace. But I'll quickly just do a run through from start to finish uh, of all the various parts. So, over here is where ore goes in. Uh, or is then separated out and stacked into stacks of 50 uh, and runs through um, all of this system over here. Uh, a lot of these chutes aren't required, they're, they're big and left over from when I was holding ore in the chutes. Um, I now have all my ore held in a vending machine over here, so it gets all nicely separated out, stacked into 50 and then put into this vending machine over here. See, I've also added a centrifuge in here, so if any reagents come out, because there are some weird things that go on with some of the super alloys where um, sometimes it will output some alloy and some reagents, then the reagents will just get put back into the system and, and turn back into ores, so you don't lose, lose anything. Um, vended uh, ores will then get sent uh, over this chute and through these queues and into the furnace here, and then once it is um, smelted correctly and the furnace lets it out it comes down here back into the system as an ingot an ingot gets sorted through over here this big mess of uh, of sorters and but i couldn't be bothered to make them look pretty so i've just stacked them on top of each other um, anything that's not an ingot and raw um, basically an incorrect item will get dumped out over here and ingots get now passed down this chute into this vending machine so this vending machine you can see has all of my ingots in. Uh, there's all sorts going on in there. Now this little section here is for um, a module for selecting exact numbers of, um, of resources. So what happens is um, ingots get vended out of here, they get split into the stack that is required to build whatever you're building, and then sorted out into the workshop um, section. Anything then left over, so if it was a big stack that was split down, then the big stack will get sent back over this loop here, back into the vending machine. Once a uh, an ingot has been um, split out into whatever it needs to be, it's sent into this sorting system up here, which sends it to the correct machine. So whichever machine is currently in use, the sorters get configured and it gets sent through into uh, down one of these chutes here into the input. So we've got our um, you know, our auto lathe here with this input here, and if that's the one that's selected, then the ingot will get sent down into the auto lathe. And finally, every output of every machine has a chute that goes up to a stacker, and those stackers converge on this uh, entry or this exit pipe here, which will then dump the things that we're constructing out onto the floor, and we'll be able to pick them up. Okay, uh, next thing I will show is an example. Okay, so let's do an example of this working. Uh, so first thing you go over uh, to the machine you want to um, build from and you select the recipe you want to build. Then use the external controls up here to uh, select the quantity. So I'm basically saying I want to build 10 um, cable coils. You then hit the button. The light over here will go yellow to show that it's working and we will start to see uh, ores are being passed around the system. So there goes the copper that's going to be required for this. That will then land in the electrics printer and we can see it's the exact amount, so it's exactly five grams of copper, so then the electric printer just keeps going until it runs out of, um, of reagents. So that gets sent up into the stacker, the stacker is done, and oh, it's uh, it's gotten delayed on one of the cable coils, but you can see we've got 10 cable coils come out there. I'll have to sort something out to make sure that the uh, the one that's lost in the in the pipe doesn't get um, doesn't get missed by the stacker. But anyway, you can see the uh, the point there that we've got 10 cable coils requested um, and output from the uh, printer with all of the ores completely selected uh, for you and uh, sorted out. 
So let's do a slightly more complicated recipe. So we've got uh, radiators over here on the hydraulic pipe bender that need two different reagents, gold and steel. So we'll have uh, radiators, we'll build two radiators, and away we go. We've gone yellow, we can hear things moving behind us. I'll just stand here and watch and hopefully we'll see reagents start to fall through the pipes. Okay, we've got a solid green light, so that means that nothing is working. And we can see that we've got enough for two radiators. Hopefully, we'll get two radiators to drop out of here. Preferably in one stack, please. Yay, one stack this time. Don't know why that one wasn't, but there we go. We'll work that one out. Uh, and this will work for all of the, um, all of the different printers. Uh, so they're all hooked up with their own external controls and we will request ores and output uh, their results. I'll just do the technical run through that I normally do. So here are the controls for the um, both the ingot and uh, ingot selection and the workshop. So you can see there's quite a lot of IC going on here and a few memories. So um, we've got the ingot selection IC, which is uh, controlling this vending machine, this sort of this stacker, uh, and it runs off these two memories. So you basically you put in a hash of the um, the ore that you want. You put in the quantity in terms of grams that you want. And this will, uh, or this IC will read that and pull that amount from the uh, the vending machine. There's also a, the machine routing IC here, which wor works off this uh, memory here. So when this memory is set to uh, an integer between one and five, which denotes each of the um, the machines, then uh, this will basically just set up the sorters in such a way as to route things to um, the particular machine. There's the status control here, which is basically just um, setting this light to a particular color depending on uh, what's going on with the memories. Um, there's a couple of uh, stacker set um, here, which are one and two. So they control the stackers up here and the machines themselves. So if the machines have reagents in them, then they will press the activate button. So that makes sure that we're not activating unless there's something in there and starts the building process. Um, and it also uh, keeps account on what's been exported from the machine, what's been imported into the stacker, and opens the stacker once the uh, the required number has been met. That's why I'm slightly confused as to what happened with this stacker um, and why it, uh, it had one late, because it shouldn't actually um, open the stacker unless it's reached a full stack or the um, the export count of the machine down here matches the import count of the stacker up here but it, it might have been a synchronization thing where you know the code thought they were the same but the animation hadn't quite finished it's possible you get odd things between the actual variable updates and the animations uh, as to whether they're um you know ex exactly in time or not the rest of the ic's are one for each machine so the 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 code that controls each machine is quite long because there's uh, you have to basically loop through the recipe and work that out. So you can see we've got the tool control, pipe bender, security, auto lathe, and electronics control. Each one of those has almost identical code on it, except for one thing, and that is changing the um, the ID uh, integer of the machine. So. Um, you set, uh, for instance, uh, I think the security printer has got an ID of one. So in the code, there's a, a line that says um, you know, move ID one. And you have to change that for each machine to make sure that when the machine starts working, it can set this memory appropriately and it can route things in the right way. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, it all works pretty nicely, I think. You can have multiple machines working at the same time, but you do need to make sure you let the reagents get into the machine and start working before you then run off and hit another one. Because if uh, the system over here is selecting um, ingots and then you try and start another one, that's going to be pushing different values into the memory and it's going to get all confused. Um, and I just don't have enough lines of code available uh, to put in the validation around that. So, you know, you have to work that one out yourself. You just have to... Make sure you start a thing and you let it start building. Once it's building, you know that all the selection is complete and the light will have gone green. When the light is green, then you can um, go off and, and start another one. 
uh, and that will also just select more ingredients and throw them into that machine so you can have multiple machines running at the same time. This is all running on a low power network. I think if you had all the machines running at the same time, you'd probably brown that out. Um, but one or two machines running at the same time is normally fine. And uh, yeah, that's it. This is my uh, dystopian uh, industrial empire over here that um, at least allows me to uh, smelt all my ores and build whatever I want, uh, almost like a fabricator. So uh, yeah. That took a while to get working, but it's um, it is working, and it's, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm quite happy with it. So, if you have any questions, Chris Cribbles, uh, as always, please leave a comment. And uh, thank you very much. Cheers.